Okay. Hello and welcome to the Invivo Repair Centre. Today I'm going to show you how to fit the um, Invivo BC20 Bluetooth upgrade into Bose SoundDock Original Series 1. Your dock may be black or white, there are two different uh, varieties. The white ones are slightly older but the build quality is slightly better but nevertheless this dock is sounds fantastic and the build quality is so good that they just go on and on and we've been supporting these for 12 years and we have thousands and thousands of customers who have repurposed their dock into a Bluetooth speaker and are very happy with them. This latest variety of the board replaces the old BC7 and BC6 with a new Bluetooth 5 um, compatible version so this modification does away with the 30 pin connector completely and uses this area for a control panel and indicators for the Bluetooth 5. Uh, the video after this video will go through the features once we've installed this but this video will show the installation of the uh, BC20 kit into your your uh, SoundDock original series 1. Now the kit comes with the special tools you will need is this, it's a, uh, a Torx T8 screwdriver that's supplied in the kit so you needn't worry about getting one of those because we supply that in every kit every BC20 kit comes with the screwdriver I'll show you what it's for in a moment the other tool you might need is a standard Phillips or PosiDrive crosshead screwdriver number two point and you will also need a sharp craft knife or a pair of um, sharp side cutters so the cutters aren't essential, you can do it with a knife, but if you have a good pair of cutters which have got a nice sharp edge so they can f cut flat across the surface then that might be more useful for you too, but I'll show you again what they're for in a few moments. All right? So first of all check your dock, okay? So what we're looking for is, it's a sound dock original series 1 and you can easily tell it's a series 1 by the fact that this grill is inset into this plastic surround all other versions of SoundDock do not have this plastic surround, okay? And if you want to check the serial numbers just to be doubly sure, then if you look on the back of here, you can see there's the serial number label. And this is 0402. And all you need to do is check the first four digits, all right? So a Series 1 dock will start with the digits 0357, which is white, a white dock, um, 0402, which is black like this one, uh, 0498 which is a slightly different version of electronics inside but you don't need to worry about that because our conversion is compatible with all versions of series 1 right the BC20 fits all series 1's docks regardless of what type they are or the final one the later one is 053298 which is the same type B dock so say so series 1 so just to recap 0357 first four digits 0402 0498 052398 they're all series 1 and they all look, look like this underneath and the BC20 will fit all of them okay so this is the Invivo BC20 Bluetooth upgrade kit it comes in a small box about the size of a cigarette packet for those that can remember that and inside we'll just open it straight up now you've got your screwdriver and then the board itself and the upgrade board so the box is put up to one side and in here, open it carefully, unfurl it, open it up and don't pull it out of the bag in an impatient way, just ease it from the packet and we'll have a look at it, okay? So it comes assembled with the front panel, obviously this is the front panel that fits into the front area of the dock. It fits into this space here, so that when it's installed that goes in there, right? So what have we got anyway? So just a quick run over the features. The main feature video is uh, deals with more more detail, but you've got rewind, um, look, short press presses back, um, skip backtrack, pause play, skip forward. And if you hold the uh, skip back button, you get bass boost. Okay, and hold the that back button again for a couple of seconds, you'll hear the tone change. Bass boost is turned off for those that want more bass. USB fast charge socket. Auxiliary 3.5 millimeter line in. It's not a headphone jack. It is definitely not a headphone jack. It's an input for a stereo input. And uh, this is the on-off power button and the Bluetooth chair pairing button. Okay, so hold this button down for two or three seconds, and the dock makes a boop 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 noise and turns on. And then after that, just 
touch like that and it goes beep and goes into pairing mode and we've got the power LED which is the red LED and when that's on the dock is powered up in standby waiting to be used and then um, the blue tooth pairing light when it's flashing it's um, in pairing mode or connected and uh, when it's uh, on permanently then it's streaming okay and this little symbol here is the NFC pairing if your phone supports NFC pairing then you can just lay your phone on top of the dock to pair with it or to reconnect and you hear a tone and the dock doesn't have to be switched on or energized or connected to anything you just have your phone unlocked with an NFC pairing turned on and it pairs and it's usually mostly Android phones but check your phone because lots of phones do support NFC pairing without loading an app or anything on the phone they just support it straight out of the box from the manufacturer okay I know Samsung do, I know that wow wow how are we, however you say it do, um, but if don't, in order not to be disappointed just check right so anyway it comes, you can see in here there's a piece of packing foam just to support this in transit okay and if you do need to send one of these back to us then please make sure that you um, put the packing foam back in before you put it back in the box alright so to remove this from here you just grasp it like this and pull it straight up you can see if you pull it off at an angle you're going to damage the connector so it's not that delicate but be careful with it and just pull it straight up and off okay now let's have a, take a quick look at the antenna and that's the control panel and you can see here's the connector that plugs into the motherboard underneath and here's the two LEDs uh, the red and blue LED for the two you can see this thing here shining in the light is the antenna for the NFC and then you've got your red um, red LED blue LED and then a little bit of double sided um, sticky backed sticky tape on there which holds this in position and that's you remove the backing from this before we place it on the dock all right so we'll get back to that in a moment so that's the control panel stroke NFC antenna it does come in if you've got a white dock we also have white labels which we can if we have prepared, yes we have. Here are the white labels. Um, just take one out the bag for you so you can see it. When you get your, um, if you, the, we, we ship the colour of this label is dependent on the serial number. 0357 is white and all the rest are black basically. So unless you um, state the colour, we will choose the colour for you based on the serial number obviously the black on the white and the white on the black does look quite funky some people might prefer that but if you want a different color to the color of your dock then you need to let us know that's all right so there's the white one and um, when you get the white one uh, just note that it does look a bit um, scratched can you see that surface effect those scratches well this is some um, PET this is the same material as uh, plastic bottles are made up you know, drink water bottles and it's got a plastic protective film on the top so the last thing you do after you've installed it is to remove it's like a mobile phone well actually it is made of mobile phone screen material and if you pull that off you can see there is a plastic coating and underneath you've got the white and this white is, is a slightly off white which has been carefully color matched to the dock okay you can see it's shiny all right so Remember to take your <laughs> your cover off, otherwise you might think it's a little bit scratched or not cosmetically perfect, and it's because it's the cover is still on. So that's the white one, colour match to your dock. Okay. Now switching to the actual controller, what you have is you can see there's the original bows up and down buttons. That's the plus and minus buttons that are on the dock. If I put this here, you can see we've got our plus and minus buttons here. Well, that's the same as. As, as though so these the volume is controlled in the same way and we've got USB socket of course and the uh, aux socket this is a certified Bluetooth 5 certified by microchip Bluetooth module um, it's a very good piece of kit it's got multiband dynamic range compression and believe it or not you know the sound that you're used to hearing from your bows when you plug an iPod in the um, streaming, high quality streaming with this sounds even better because we've carefully matched the electronics to the input of the dock. So you can be the judge of that, but believe me, it sounds fantastic. It really does. Um, easily as good as anything that's out there uh, for that compact size these days. Of course, you've got the build quality as well of something that was made when the docks were only £300 each. So they were expensive items and you can tell 
by the speed cones and everything else, so they are worth upgrading. Um, so one thing about handling this is it's generally pretty robust, um, but you do need to make sure you, these switches are quite tall, and if you push them on the sideways, they will break. We haven't had any break. We've shipped something like 400 so far at the point this video is being remade, and we haven't had any customers break them, but just be careful not to use too much force. And as with all the other Invivo products, I'm just going to switch to a different macro mode so I can explain this connector. There is the connector in question, and it is a locking connector. The one on the standard bows is just to push in. You have to push the ribbon in to make contact. This one is a zero insertion force. It's explained in the other videos, but if I just pull that, gently pull that forward, that thing coming out now, this part of the front here, is the locking collar. Okay. Now, if you have the ribbon. Um, if I can get a ribbon from somewhere, have I got one? I'll show you when we come round to the uh, to the assembly. But this um, this needs to be out. You push the ribbon in until it's fully squarely in, and you've got an even amount of uh, silver contact material showing above this edge here. You'll see it. Then you push this in to lock the the uh, twenty four way umbilical ribbon in place. All right. That's about it really. Apart from that, it's plug and play. So let's just get on with the installation. So the BC20 comes with a button panel of, um, matched to your serial number, the controller, and the T8 torque screwdriver, right? That's what you get in the kit. That is the kit right there. So, on to step two. I'll just show you the features. You've got this grill which lifts out. We'll do that in a moment. And you've got these four screws here, which hold this base moulding on, and inside there you can see the back socket of the connector there is the sound processor and the electronics, and then underneath this half moon, half moon moulding is the board which we are going to change. It's a docking board in at the moment, we're going to put the BC20 in. So the first thing you need to do is just to get a screwdriver into these four screws, the big ones, the crosshead, and just undo them a couple of turns each. Okay, you're not talking about taking these right out. Uh, if you do, you could dislodge a ribbon cable uh, which goes up to the top half of the dock that powers the amplifier. So at the moment we're just going to undo these a couple of turns. And the reason for that is there's a ribbon cable trapped underneath this lid pushing up against the back of the sound processor. There are other videos which show you the complete disassembly and complete reassembly, but for a normal installation you don't need to go any further than just removing these, I'm um, sorry, undoing these four screws. Take the T8 torque screwdriver, which, which uh, is in the kit, and engage it into these three screws in the base moulding, in the half moon moulding, shall I say. You can see them there. One. Undo it fully. They usually come out on the end of the screwdriver like that, so what I do is to... We ha you'd be surprised how many people ask for spare screws, because they've tumbled all over the floor. Um, but I use these little shot cups to put the screws in. Well, so if you get a little cup or something like that, put your screws in. It might save you a bit of time later on. It'll save us having to sort some screws out for you as well. Uh, undo all three. All three come away. Come on. There we are. I'm doing this single-handedly because the one's holding the dock. This could get tricky. All right. So now we've loosened off this half moon moulding and then we can remove it. Okay, so if I tip this forward you'll get a better view of that just falling open. So here we have, I'll just pull this forward now you can see what we've got. We've got the old board, the old Bose docking board with the old connector on. And that's the board we're going to be replacing with the BC20. Okay, so what you do is you just gently, if I pull this up you can see if you just pull this forward, this ribbon will start to come out, okay? Just pull it forward maybe 10, 15 millimeters. See that's coming out and it will push back under without you having to take this cover off, okay? So don't, if you can help it, don't pull it all the way out because it's gonna make it much easier to slide it back in and make a much more efficient uh, upgrade rather than having to take the base off and then the complications which arise from there. It's not complicated. We've had nine year olds do it uh, the old version of the BC7 
to the video so as long as you take it step by step and watch the video first you should have no problems okay so you grasp the ribbon there to hold it and the object of holding it there is to hold it to stop it being pulled out any further from the body of the dock here and just rock this back to you can see that moving now can you see that coming out zoom in a little bit more you can actually see the moment of departure of separation there we are all right so give these a quick check there you can see them there there's the contacts 24 little silver contacts you can see even see the marks where the con they've been in contact with the actual socket on the board look and what you're looking for is to see a straight row of them none of them bent flaking off peeling off crossed over removed damaged and if it's been in the rain or you've spilt some red wine or Ribena, which is like a black currant cordial, is absolutely the worst thing. We've seen a couple of Ribenas before and it's really very corrosive. But Ribena and electricity do not mix. Um, so don't try it at home. So you can see they're all shiny and nicely placed and that's going to work fine, okay? If you've had a spillage or ingress of moisture, um, you'll see these are blackened and rotten and horrible. And you're going to have to ask us for a new ribbon cable. We'll supply one for you if you ask us if you've bought a kit. But you need to... Um, get on to us, don't plug it in if this looks at all um, manky but that one's okay, it's lovely isn't it All right. so that's, I'm looking at the ribbon that's just poking out the front of the dock at the moment okay okay so we've checked our, our ribbon cable is okay and now it's time to work on this piece, the front moon moulding with the old Bose board you can see there's a plastic cover, although there should be a plastic cover on yours and you just hold it down and remove it and discard it because you don't need it anymore the new system doesn't use it um, and now we can there's two methods of doing this there's either use a sharp knife and you can see what's happened here is that this board is held onto this board this piece of plastic this plastic base molding half moon molding what there is in production there's little molded pegs which are sticking up and they what they do is they drop the board over the top and then there's a jig comes down with hot pins on it which melt these, you can see these have been melted into little mushroom tops and we just have to remove those mushroom tops to free the board okay so there's two ways of doing it, you can either do it with a knife like this just gently rock your way through make sure you don't cut yourself okay slice off the top, so we're actually slicing the top off the mushroom so then the pin can go back through, down through the hole or if you do have a pair of cutters, you can use do this method. Snip them off. Okay, you can use the snipping method, but you have to have a pair of what they call flush cut that will cut up against the surface. All right, so I'm going to do it this way because it's quicker off the demonstration. But if you do do it by with a knife, just make sure your knife is sharper than mine. Okay. Also, if you're using it with a knife on some of these, you can lever the knife up against a convenient... You see me backing the back of the blade onto the connector there to get some leverage. And then you can slice it off. All right. So there's various methods of doing it, but the bottom line is that you have to be carefully, again, using the switch's leverage that time. And depending on the shape and, and type of knife that you've got, but obviously cut away from your fingers and avoid all safety issues because I'm not going to be held responsible and this one here back a bit. and there's one there okay now not all these pegs have been melted in a very they seem to slam the uh, melter down on it without time for the pegs to actually melt I think they're a little bit too rapid in production and sometimes they bend over so this board can be slid one way or another and if you look at the pegs you can see they're leaning over like palm trees in a in a hurricane all right so we've basically cut all four so now with a little bit of levering this should just come off there we go just a screwdriver under the edge give her a bit of a, a tweak a lift and there she is beautiful okay so it's bloody dust out a bit dusty now if we go down to these pegs if I, if you look at them, I'm not sure how we can get a really good look. Can you see how not round they are? They've got bits of, um, they're kind of like 
squished over at the top at very angles and if you with your knife if you just tidy them up a little bit to make them to cut off any overhang it will make putting the unit back together much easier okay there you go so sometimes you can just pull the extra material off the top like I am you can see the pegs have been left behind now and we've got clean pegs that one's a little bit too stiff to pull off by, by hand but gently and take your time just tidy them up to make them into round pegs again it will make life so much easier for you if you do this okay so they should be kind of parallel all the way up cylindrical like that one is now you see they're round now that one still needs some tension doesn't it can you see that one's nice and round I'm sorry to labor this but it will make putting the thing back together so much easier for you and then finally that one there so I hope you can see that I'm just going to zoom in so you get a better look of what we're actually talking about there because it is quite important it's not difficult but it's a step that if followed will make life much more pleasant so there they are there are the pegs look can you see them all nice and round on the top not leaning over can you see them all nice and straight and round that's how you want your pegs and if they're not like that carefully trim them make sure you can see wear a pair of, spe of uh, magnifying glass or reading glasses or whatever it is you need to be able to do this properly I'm doing this at arm's length because I <laughs> can't get my head in the way of the camera so yeah I might give this a little bit of a clean in a minute to remove some of this dust and detritus now there is one thing you should consider um, that we have to consider should I say is that um, in order to fit all this electronics in obviously the electronics sits in over those pegs like that but you'll see down here there is one peg there can you see that peg in that gap there uh, there which had to be um, got in the way of the electronics really it was quite a tight space and to get the Bluetooth these have got much better range than the Bluetooth 5 um, it's need to remove that peg okay so again using your cutters or your knife is to take that one peg and I'm talking about that's the central boss there if I just zoom out slightly sorry about this and go here you can see it's this one here that has to be removed so just cut that flush we call it flush which means level with these plastic ribs snip her off okay and just make sure she's level and so we've removed that peg just there so that we can fit our board on most important that you do that and again for the same reason we've removed this peg here it's necessary to remove this peg just here okay so if I put that on there and the snip it's gone okay so remove those two pegs we're talking about removing this peg and that peg until they are flat flush with this thing it's on the right hand side on of the dock at the front of the half moon molding all right so it's those two pegs have to be removed if you don't remove those pegs when you put the board on the board should just drop over nicely like that and the board drops on and you can see they're all the pegs are fitting through the holes nicely with a little bit of adjustment just so the thing can center itself when you assemble and if I just go off tele macro and what we're looking for is to ensure that when we look down through this gap and you can see it there that the board is sitting right down on those ribs if they, if you're sitting on top of the peg because the pegs haven't been trimmed and it's lifted up then your volume control buttons on your dock won't work because this will be sitting too high and it'll be pressing on this button so it's most important that this will sit down comfortably and easily directly on to the actual molding All right so no gaps don't try and assemble it until you've got this sitting down happily without any gap showing all right so our board is sitting on there nicely we now take our dock and before we reassemble clearly you can see in this side this one that this area here the actual lip is very dusty and we want to clean that uh, free of dust so that when we put our control panel onto the unit it actually sticks down properly because otherwise it can pop up or something you know you just want to make sure that's all clean very shiny this stuff um, car polish works extremely well not an abrasive one but an ordinary car polish on a dock gives it an incredible shine 
Um, there we are, so that's clean now. Right, so we noticed on some docks that this plastic edge, depending on which cavity the half moon moulding, the cradle moulding has been moulded from, this edge here, you can see where my finger is, there's a step there. On some of them, the step is quite a long way to the left and it can interfere with the connector. Not on all, but on some, so it's safe. Make sure you do this step, is to cut about a millimetre off that edge. All right, so I've got my cutters there. You can also do it with a very sharp knife. Okay, so there you can see that edge. It's the edge um, where the connector goes. And what we do is we just take a, about two millimetres of that and just slice it off like so. I'm just gonna pull it off with the, uh, my fingers. All right. So now you can see, I'm just going to sharpen that edge. It's quite easy to cut with a sharp knife. It's not difficult to do. And that will just make sure you've, it won't fail. Most don't, but some do, because that edge seems to be unimportant to the tool maker and they've moved them along slightly. So not all these are obviously molded in exactly the same tool. They have different, what they call cavities, and the cavities always different, differ slightly from each other. But I'll just um, show you the ledge, edge. We've just relieved that edge, moved it back a couple of millimetres just to make life a little bit easy and it's this one here we're talking about at the back of the cradle aperture right so now we've done that we can turn the dock around and then holding this down with your finger like that so this goes in folded out where's the dock label look here's our board and we take the BC20 assembly here pull out these collars so do you remember what I said about um, zero insertion force Okay, so the collar is fully out, ready to accept the ribbon cable. So we carefully feed the ribbon cable in, like that. And you can see now it's in the connector, I'm holding it with one hand, and you can see you've got an even row of little silver contacts poking out, which tells you the ribbon is fully in, and it's in perpendicular to the board, it's fully in at both sides. And then you can just lock this into position. Okay, but be careful, don't hold on to the switches, hold on to the board. It can be a bit stiff and you might need to do one end and then the other and then the other. You can see because sometimes it rocks out. And we had a dock back this week from a customer who would sworn blind that he put it together correctly and that you couldn't get it to work properly and I opened it up because I wanted to see what there was and one end of this was sticking out and the because the clamp wasn't clamped the contacts weren't making contact and it had to be sent in all that problem because these two tabs so look after those two tabs okay so now making sure that your board is still sitting down over the pegs correctly which it is so I swivel that up you can see it's sitting properly now we're going to go out tele macro now so that um, you can get a better view of this, so stand by. All right. Now, what do we do? We have to keep this sandwiched together, so this has to be held together whilst you put the unit back together. All right. So the way to do that is to put your finger through the hole and just bring it up here and just make a pincer movement. And the idea of this pincer movement is just to stop the board coming off those pegs and you slide the ribbon back under, drop this down, maneuver it into position until it fits home, okay? So still holding that, it's in position, um, we just get our three screws, drop them back into the half moon moulding, like so. Take our T8 Torx screwdriver, lovingly supplied by Invivo in the kit and screw it down. We'll deal with these four screws in a minute because I'm still holding this together. So still holding it, right the dock. And there you can see the BC20 is fitted into the dock body itself. All right. If I just zoom down.
and if I just go back into Telemacro you can see that the pegs are sitting in the holes they're all happily sitting in the holes all right so this this unit is down and in position all right and then to double check that you've got this right before you go any further because this will cause you problems it's not difficult but if you don't follow the instructions it'll waste your time really and perhaps ours too and just press the buttons the volume control buttons you'll feel them click and they're working all right and they've got some move if they're hard and they won't you can see them moving down there you see that you can see the, the movement we've got on that and the movement we've got on this one um, if you can't move them and they're rock hard then you haven't got it sitting on the pegs it's most important all right so the final stage of this assembly is to take your antenna board I find what I've done with it okay so as mentioned these pins this, this, this pin header, that's called a pin header, the connector that connects the NFC and the LEDs to the electronics goes into that socket there. You can see a socket next to the um, auxiliary input jack socket. And what you have to do is just to lower that down. Obviously, first of all, um, remove, use your sharp knife to remove the backing for the self-adhesive, which I'm just going to do now. Pick it off. Catch it there. And pull. That's the idea anyway. And then the other one goes here. Revealing self-adhesive strip. And we're lowering this down carefully. We're not giving it a push or a shove. We're dropping it over there, keeping it square and in line. You don't want to put it on like that on top of there, obviously, because those pins won't line up. And likewise, you don't want to do it like that. It's got to be with that back edge. You can see that back edge along here. You see the aperture there where it goes into, drop it down on top of the, uh, it's not difficult, and it's sort of sitting in position now, engage the pins, and you might need just to push it down, um, but you may need to just move some of these slightly to get them to line up with the holes properly. Obviously all four buttons have got to go through the four holes. Once again. Okay, so I'll push it down there as well. Make sure all your buttons work. All right, and then uh, make sure these buttons are okay. They are, it's lovely. Make sure everything is lined up. That is now installed, okay? You can see it. If I just zoom out, you can see what it looks like. They've got the BC20s installed in the dock. So the final thing, do you remember we didn't um, didn't tighten up these screws? So we just need to tighten those screws up. This makes a fantastic speaker when it's done. All right, so now, now you have it, basically. So we've installed the unit, it's checked, it's good. Um, everything is done. I say there's a series, if any complications happen while you're doing this, we've got a series of other videos which are come, either being issued or coming along very soon, which will deal with any of the assembly issues you may come across. All right, but that's what the dock looks like when it's been installed. Now, if you go to the next video after this, I'll play with this very dock and we'll demonstrate the the features to you but I hope you found that interesting if you want to see more Bose videos and other related videos then please subscribe to the subscription button in the corner um, because information and products and fault finding and debugging may come along later all of which may be of use to you okay so that's how you upgrade a Bose Sound Dock uh, original series one black or white with a color match label to the BC20 Bluetooth 5 certified NFC pairing fast charge, aux, control buttons and indicators uh, device. All right. So yeah, stand by for the next video. Go to the next video if you want to watch the features. But thanks for watching and good luck with your installation if you bought one. If you haven't bought one, get one soon.